In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the steric number. What is the steric number? Well, let's take some notes. The steric number is the sum of the number of sigma bonds that an atom has plus the number of lone pairs. The steric number helps us to determine the hybridization of an atom. So here are some general rules. I'm going to make a little table between the steric number and hybridization. If the steric number is 1, you're dealing with an s orbital. It's not really a hybrid orbital because it's just pure s. If the steric number is 2, typically you're going to be dealing with a hybrid sp orbital. If the steric number is 3, the hybridization is going to be sp2. If the steric number is 4, you're typically dealing with an sp3 hybrid orbital. For 5, it's d sp3 and for 6 d2 sp3. Notice that the exponents add up to the steric number. So for sp 1 plus 1 is 2. For sp 2 1 plus 2 is 3. For sp 3 1 plus 3 is 4. So now let's work on some examples. Let's start with methane. Let's determine the steric number of the central carbon atom as well as the hybridization. So remember the steric number is the sum of the sigma bonds and the lone pairs. Carbon has four bonds. Every bond represents a sigma bond. It has no lone pairs so the steric number is four. And what is the hybridization around the central carbon atom? If the steric number is 4, the hybridization is going to be sp3. So carbon has four hybrid sp3 orbitals around it. Now let's try another example. Let's look at ammonia, NH3. What is the steric number of the central nitrogen atom? What would you say? Nitrogen has three sigma bonds and one lone pair. So three plus one, that gives us a steric number of four. So we're dealing with, we could say that nitrogen has sp3 hybrid orbitals, which also means that this lone pair is in an sp3 hybrid orbital. For those of you who are interested in joining my Patreon membership program, this is how it's gonna look like. You could find it at patreon.com slash math science tutor. Now one of the things I want to mention is my organic chemistry exam one video. Part one is about four hours long, part two is about almost four hours long as well. This exam has 90 practice problems and it covers topics like acids and bases, resonance structures, hybridization, chair conformations, new projections, IUPAC nomenclature, Pretty much the things that you're most likely to be tested on in the first exam within organic chemistry. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Now if you do sign up, you do get access to other videos as well. If you click on this link, it'll show my other organic chemistry videos. The free versions are on YouTube, but here you can access the extended versions of those videos. So for instance, this video might be 10, 20 minutes long on YouTube, but the full version is one hour long. Now I do have some worksheets here as well. I'm still building out some other ones. So feel free to check this page later to see any updates. In addition to all these videos, you'll be getting my Organic Chemistry 1 final exam review video. which is right here. So this video is about six hours long. It contains a hundred practice problems. So I recommend watching this video ahead of time. You don't want to cram the night before because there's a lot of content on this video. Go ahead and try these examples. So find the steric number of the central carbon atom and also the oxygen atom as well. And determine the hybridization of those two atoms. So the carbon 
What is the steric number for carbon? How many sigma bonds does it have? Remember, a single bond represents one sigma bond. A double bond has one sigma bond and one pi bond. A triple bond has one sigma bond and two pi bonds. So the carbon atom has one, two, and there's one sigma in the double bond. So it has three sigma bonds. It doesn't have any lone pairs, so the steric number is three. Since we have a steric number three, we know that the carbon contains three hybrid sp2 orbitals. Now what about this oxygen atom here? What's the steric number? Oxygen has one sigma bond in the double bond, and it has two lone pairs. So the steric number is going to be 1 plus the two lone pairs, so that's the steric number 3, which means the oxygen has a hybridization of sp2. So these orbitals on the oxygen atom, they exist in sp2 hybrid orbitals. Now carbon has one s orbital and it has three p orbitals. Now because this carbon is sp2 hybridized, what that means is that carbon took its s orbital and two out of its three p orbitals to create this hybrid sp2 orbital. But notice that it has one left over. So carbon has an empty p orbital, the same is true for oxygen. And those empty p orbitals they're used to form the pi bond that's in this carbon. So for those of you who want a visual of that, here's how it looks like. So here's the carbon atom. And here are the three hybrid sp2, SP2 orbitals. My drawing is terrible. Let me do this better. Hydrogen simply has an s orbital, so we're just going to draw a sphere. So the s orbital looks like this, a p orbital looks like that, and sp2 is a hybrid of these two, but it looks more like a p orbital than an s. So here's the oxygen atom, and here is the sp2 hybrid orbital of the oxygen. So the lone pairs of the oxygen atom, they exist in sp2 hybrid orbitals. Now the carbon atom has an empty p orbital. I'm going to draw it in a different color. Let's put it in red. And the oxygen also has an empty p orbital. So this makes the pi bond that's found in the carbonyl group of formaldehyde. So the sigma bond is right here. This is an sp2 hybrid orbital and this is an sp2 hybrid orbital. So this sigma bond represents, it's an overlap of two sp2 orbitals. The pi bond is the overlap of the empty p orbitals that was not used to make the hybrid sp2 orbitals. So that's the second bond of the double bond, the pi bond, which is above and below the sigma bond. If we look at the CH bond, what is the orbital overlap of the CH bond? We know that hydrogen simply has an s orbital. Carbon is sp2 hybridized. So we could say it's s sp2. So the orbital overlap of this bond is sp2s or ssp2. And you can see that here. This is an s orbital. This is an sp2 orbital. And so we have an overlap of those two orbitals. So it's ssp2. Go ahead and try these examples. Determine the steric number of the oxygen atom as well as the hybridization on oxygen.
and do the same thing for the carbon atom in carbon monoxide. So this oxygen has two sigma bonds, two lone pairs, so it has a steric number of four, which means the hybridization is sp3. This carbon atom has one lone pair, and in this triple bond there's only one sigma, two pi bonds, but we're counting the sigma bonds. So it has one sigma, one lone pair, so that's a steric number of two, which means the hybridization is S1P1, or SP hybridized. And the same is true for the oxygen. It has a steric uh, number of two, so the hybridization is SP. Go ahead and do the same thing for the carbon atom and the hydrogen atom. And determine the overlap of orbitals in the CH bond. So this hydrogen has an S orbital. The steric number is 1 because it only has one sigma bond. And for this carbon, the steric number is we got one sigma bond here and one sigma bond there, so two sigma bonds. That's the steric number of 2. That's the hybridization is SP. So the hybridization of the bond, or rather, the overlap of orbitals in that bond, it's an overlap of an S orbital and an SP hybrid orbital. We can't say the S orbital is a hybrid orbital because it's just pure S. Now let's do one more example. Let's consider an alkyl halide. What is the steric number and the hybridization of the bromine atom? So the bromine atom has one sigma bond, as we can see here. It has three lone pairs. That's a steric number of four. Because the steric number is four, the hybridization is going to be S1P3 hybridized. So that's it for this video. Now you know the relationship between steric number and hybridization. And you also know how to find the steric number in a molecule. Thanks for watching.